All right, here we are with the very last uh, installment of the most important thing in the Christian life. We've dealt with in the previous two installments, we've dealt with love being more important than prophecies. Uh, and the, in the second installment, we dealt with love being more important than tongues. And in this one, I want to deal with love being more important than knowledge. That's right. Love being is more important than knowledge. Uh, First Corinthians chapter 13, uh, verse eight, we're going to look at the D part. We'll just recap. Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. And here's the part that we're going to focus on in this last session. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. So the word knowledge in the Greek means a seeking to know, a seeking to know, an inquiry, or I like to put it this way, an investigation, all right? An investigation. And it's especially for or of spiritual truth, all right? So a seeking to know spiritual, spiritual truth or an investigating of spiritual truth truth. When someone teaches God's word in a way that consistently brings out wonderful spiritual truths or applications, you got to hear me on this. That person probably has the gift of knowledge. Okay. Now I know gift of knowledge has been, has been, um, I guess, I guess explained many different ways, but you really have to get this thing in context with where Paul uh, was coming from, okay? This is specifically dealing with spiritual truth. And when a person has uh, the ability to bring out wonderful gems and truths within God's word or in different applications, that person probably has the, the gift of knowledge. This gift, listen to me good, will also vanish away. <laughs> Just like prophecies will fail. In other words, they will end. Just like tongues will cease, they will come to a halt. Knowledge will also vanish away. Well, you may say, and you may ask, well, Pastor Devin, why will knowledge vanish away? I'm glad you asked, because in heaven, hear me good, we won't need Bible teachers. You, you won't need to sit down with me on a Wednesday night <laughs> or schedule some time on, on your device to go on my YouTube channel. No, thank God. You won't need a Bible teacher in heaven. Why? Well, I, I want to show you this. Let's go to the book of Habakkuk. Someone call someone, some other people call it Habakkuk. You know, that Old Testament minor prophet. Let's look at the second chapter and the 14th verse. Habakkuk 2 and 14. Listen to this. It says, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. My brother Deron quotes this verse quite a bit. Let me say it one more time. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Y'all remember that song, cover the earth, cover the earth with your glory, cover the earth with your glory. Cover the earth with the sound of your presence. Y'all remember, that, that, that's kind of where this, this was coming from. The glory of the Lord. This is good. The glory of the Lord. It refers to his special and powerful presence with his people. When God decides to come in, and just make his abode with us. We experience the glory of the Lord. A glimpse of this can be seen at the completion of the tabernacle, right? 
um, Moses could not enter into the tent because the glory of the Lord filled it. Exodus chapter 40. Let's go back there. Let's just go back there real quick. Exodus chapter 40. And we'll start at verse 34, 34 and 35. Verse 34, Exodus chapter 40. Then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting and the glory of the Lord, there it is, filled the tabernacle. Verse 35, and Moses was not, a, was not able to enter the tabernacle of meeting. Why? Because the cloud rested above it and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. The glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. You know, there was also another glimpse of God's glory or presence. It's seen later when Solomon's temple is completed. Let's go there. First Kings chapter eight. I hope you are really going through your Bible as I'm going through it. I, I just love going through the scriptures like this. Um, first Kings chapter eight. There we are. Landed right on it. What do you know? First Kings chapter eight. Let's look at verse 11. We'll start at verse 10. And it came to pass when the priest came out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of the Lord so that the priest could not continue ministering because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Ooh. The glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Boy, I tell you, I just can't, I just, that just kind of just stopped me right there. I just can't wait until we're able to get back together where we can come back into God's house and experience his glory together. I mean, I've, listen, I, I've, I've experienced God's glory in my home. During this time of shutdown, I've experienced the presence of God, God's glory filling our home. We were just uh, having a moment of worship the other day. I put on a YouTube channel and it would just had just like a YouTube mix and just worship videos. And I tell you, me and Courtney and the girls and mom, we were there and, and uh, we were just worshiping God. It was just beautiful. It was a beautiful moment. And Courtney's looked over at me and says, do you miss this? I said, yeah, I miss this. I miss. Uh, I miss being in corporate worship with my family with you. And I know, I know God, I know God is going to give us a time when we can safely come back together again and worship God. Because there's nothing more that I would want than to just experience the glory of the Lord in the house of the Lord. While we live on earth, we can't fully have the knowledge of God's glory. However, the need for further knowledge of God and his glory will vanish away because the earth will be filled with it like air fills the earth today, like waters fill the oceans. In, in heaven, we won't need the knowledge of God anymore. As a matter of fact, we, we won't need the knowledge of God any more than the sea needs more water. And the, and the question becomes, well, why don't we? And the answer is simply this. 
because it is full. In heaven, we will have the fullness of God's glory. We will know it. Won't have any more need for knowledge because heaven will be full of God and his glory. Let's just recap here. Love is more important than prophecies. Love is more important than tongues. And love is more important than knowledge. Therefore, love is the most important thing in the Christian life because it is the only thing that can improve our relationships with our brothers and our sisters in Christ and with everyone else. You know, love is also important I would say it's also the most important thing because it is the essence of the eternal God. And because God is eternal, love is also eternal. Because there is no end to God, there is no end to love. Love the most important thing in the Christian life. This is part three of this three-part teaching. I pray that it was a blessing to you. Go with God and he will go with you. Be blessed.